Today's lecture is on limiting reagents. You can see the objective at the top there. We're going to determine which reactants are limiting reagents in several chemical equations. We're going to look at two examples today. Limiting reagents are defined as the reactant that runs out first in a chemical reaction. I've talked about the hot dog conundrum in this class before. Okay? I can't stand the fact that I go to the grocery store, I buy a package of hot dogs, I get 10 hot dogs, then I go over to the bakery and I buy hot dog buns and I only get how many buns? Eight. That's irritating to me. Why don't the hot dog bun company and the hot dog company get together and figure out how many they're going to put in a package? Because I go to the grill and I start whipping up hot dogs, grill masters going, right? Okay. And what happens? What do I run out of first every single time? The buns, yeah, okay? Take that idea, that concept, and apply it to chemistry. Okay? You think about the lab that we just did. Okay? We mixed together lead acetate and zinc. Okay? Clearly, one of those ran out first, right? Which one was it? The lead acetate. Okay? We know that because what did we just pull out of the beaker? Leftover zinc, right? Okay? Questions so far? All right, so our first example that we're going to do today, you have 215 grams of barium chloride and 180 grams of silver nitrate. I would like you to take the time to write a balanced chemical equation given that those are your two reactants. And I'll give you a moment to do that. So I went a little easy on here because I didn't write these out as names, right? I gave you the formulas that you were starting with. So you know the beginning is going to be BACL2 plus AGNO3. What type of chemical reaction are we looking at right now? A double replacement. Double replacement means that we're going to have like replacing like. And what do I mean by that? The same charges are going to replace one another. So what has the same charges between these two? The silver and the barium or the chlorine and the nitrate, right? Okay, so whichever way makes more sense in your head to think about. The positive ones switching places with one another or the negative ones switching places with one another. It doesn't matter, right? Okay, either the front end on each of the compounds are going to flip or the back end is going to flip. So we're going to have silver bonding with chlorine. Silver's charge is always what? One. And chlorine's charge is always negative one. We got a one-to-one -one ratio there, so we're good to go. We write that compound together. Now, the other compound that we have, we have barium, which is a two-plus charge, and nitrate, which is a one-minus charge. Are those equal and opposite? No. What do I need to add another one of? The NO3. So I'm going to put the NO3 in parentheses and write a two outside. So far, so good? Okay. Now, last thing we got to do is balance it. What's out of whack? Chlorine. The chlorines. We got two chlorines over here. So I'm going to add a coefficient of two out front. And now I got the silvers out of balance. So I've got two over here. So I got to put a two out front there. Okay. And that took care of the nitrates, right? The nitrogen and the oxygens got balanced by balancing the other stuff. Questions so far? Now, the next question we have listed here is which reactant is the limiting reagent? We talked a little bit about this last week. Anytime I give you two amounts in your problem, how many problems are you going to have? Two. We're going to have two separate problems here. The first one is going to be 215 grams of barium chloride. And the other problem is going to be 180.00 grams of the silver nitrate. Now, this should look frighteningly familiar, right? We've done a lot of these already. What are we going to try and get to? Well, we could choose either one of our products to convert into, right? It doesn't matter which product we choose. We just need to convert into one of them. Can we make our lives easier? Yeah, okay. 
If we look at this next question that Sutton's getting ready to ask us, it says, how much silver chloride in grams will be produced? Is silver chloride one of my products? Yeah, absolutely. So let's make our lives easy. Let's convert both of them into grams of silver chloride. So that's what we're going to try and get to. That's going to be our end result here. You could stop at moles if you wanted to, and then you would just have to do the grams conversion down here as your step. It doesn't matter, whichever way you'd prefer to do it. Okay? Other questions? Anyone with our problems here? All right, somebody over here, mass of barium chloride, what'd you get? 208. 233 grams per mole. Whoops, I put that backwards, didn't I? 208.233 grams per mole. We got a couple people that agree with her math. Yes? Yeah? Good? Okay, excellent. All right, the other problem we have silver nitrate. What's the molecular mass of silver nitrate? Eight six grams per mole. We got a couple people that agree with his math, yes? Yeah, yeah. 169.86. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and do a mole ratio. The top problem is going to have a mole ratio 1 BACL2 to 2 AGCL, and my bottom problem is going to have a 2 to 2 ratio. 2 AGNO3 to 2 AG. CL. Now, this problem, we could technically stop at moles and compare our mole values, right? But remember, the next problem is asking us to get it into grams anyway. So is it really that much extra work to convert both of these into grams right now? No. Okay. What do we get for a molecular mass of silver chloride? Yeah, 143.321. Uh, check your math on that one there, okay? 143.321 grams per mole. All right, let's get some answers up here to each of these problems. 152.5. We got five sig figs. 88. Eight. Okay. How about the top problem? What do we get for a number? 195295.96. Excellent. So we've done the work. Now we need to think for a minute here. Okay. The first problem that I have up on my smart board here, 215 grams of barium chloride will produce 295.96 grams of silver chloride. Yes? Okay. That's if we use all of that and have as much silver nitrate as we could possibly need, right? Okay. Then we flip it around. We have 180 grams of silver nitrate and as much barium chloride as we could ever possibly need. That 180 grams would run out first and it would produce 151.88 grams of silver chloride. Now, which one of these is the correct answer? It is always the smaller of the two values. That's how you choose, every single time. Whichever one is the smaller of the two. Okay, so that's my answer to C. 151.88 grams. Okay, and we've got the work right there to prove it. We're done. We've shown our work. We've got an answer. We're good to go with C. The, we have not finished problem B yet, though. Remember, problem B said which reactant is the limiting reagent. To solve that, we take the smaller value and we go back to the start of the problem. Okay? That is my limiting reagent. You can't have a product be a limiting reagent. 
A limiting reagent has to be one of your reactants, one of your starting materials. So that's why you work backwards back to that beginning of the problem there, and that is what you identify as your limiting reagent. Question? Uh, no, by definition, you could just say silver nitrate is a limiting reagent, and that would be acceptable. Any other questions? All right, one more problem using this set of data, and this one's a review. If the actual yield is 130.0 grams, what is the percent yield? So this number that we just solved for right here is my what? Yeah, that is the theoretical so just to review real quick, since this is a calculation you're going to have to do tonight for homework, 130 grams over 151.88 grams times 100, and we get what? Five nine four nine, so it would be f just eighty five point five nine percent if we've got four sig figs. Yes, we got a couple people that agree with his math. Yeah, okay, all right. Any questions? All right, I got one more of these that I'd like to do with you. Okay, did everybody have enough time to copy that down? Okay, so here are your starting amounts. Again, same thing we did before. I want you to write a balanced chemical equation. Once you have those two things jotted down, now's a good opportunity to check your uh, product. Here we go. So we start off with hydrochloric acid, and we're reacting it with magnesium. What type of chemical reaction are we dealing with here? Single replacement. So now the magnesium, if it were to get a charge, would be what? To what? Positive. So that means it's going to switch places with whatever part of this is positive as well. Okay? Hydrogen or chlorine, what's going to get a positive charge? The hydrogen. So we're going to find the magnesium bonding with the chlorine and the hydrogen by itself. Now, when magnesium bonds with something, it gets that 2 plus charge. Chlorine's charge is always negative 1, so we need two chlorines to balance that out. Then the last thing, hydrogen, when it's by itself, it's what? Diatomic, two of them. Okay, to get that to balance, we need to go ahead and put a coefficient of two out front there. Questions? All right, so second question says, determine the limiting reagent. We got two amounts of reactants that we're starting with, so we're going to have two problems. 75.00 milliliters of HCl. And the 1.25 grams of magnesium. Now, what are we trying to get to? Let's look at problem C down here. What does it say? We're trying to get to liters of hydrogen gas. So that's going to be my endpoint liters of H2. Yes, question. Uh, you are correct. It does give us a moles per liter. Okay, Your first step should be showing me going from volume of the solution in liters to moles, multiplying by that molarity there. Okay. But before I get to that, I've got to convert milliliters into what? Liters. That's the very first step here. And I'm okay if you do that directly in your calculator. You don't necessarily have to show this step if you don't want to. Okay? If you know it and you can do it consistently correct every time. Now I'm ready to do what, Stephen? Yeah, moles. So I'm going to take... 3.0 moles per liter and multiply by that value. That gets me from the bottom of the mole map into the center, yes? Okay. My second problem, I only have one step I have to do here. Divide by the 
which is my atomic mass of magnesium. And the next step is to do a molar ratio for each one. 2 HCl to 1 H2 and 1 Mg to 1 H2. Okay, and both of those come from my balanced chemical equation, yes? Okay, that's where those numbers come from. Now, since we're trying to get to liters of a gas at STP, we're going to take both of these problems and finish with what? 22.4. Am I going to multiply or divide by it? Multiply by it. So it's going to be 22.4 liters per mole, 22.4 liters per mole. What'd you get for the? Sure. 2.52 for the top one and the bottom one. 1.15. Do we like the, those people, their answers? Yeah? Okay. All right. So what's the answer to C? Generally speaking, it's always the smaller value. So the answer to C is going to be 1.15 liters of H2 there. Okay. Now, the limiting reagent. We go up here. Since we've identified this as my smaller value, we go back to the start of the problem, and we identify that the magnesium is my limiting reagent. That's what's going to run out first. Any questions? All right, if the actual yield was 1.00 liters, what is the percent yield? So we take 1.00 liters and 1.15 liters times 100, and that gives us what? 87.0%. All right. So, what we're going to do for this problem E, what is the excess amount of the non-limiting reagent? We are going to take these two values that we got in B and subtract them from one another. So I'm going to take 2.5 liters of hydrogen and subtract 1.15 liters of hydrogen. And that gives me 1.35 liters of hydrogen not produced. So I took my two product amounts from part B, determining the limiting reagent, and subtracted them from one another. This is how much hydrogen gas was not able to be produced because our limiting reagent ran out. Yes? So what we're going to do is take that amount And we're going to go backwards through this problem right here. Okay? Because what we want to know... So we're going to go backwards through this problem right here. And instead of multiplying by 22.4, we're going to have to do what? Divide. So we're basically going to take this exact problem and flip it front to back and flip it top to bottom. Yes? Okay, and just work our way backwards through this problem to get back to the starting point. Let's do it together. Okay, so my last step was to multiply by 22.4 liters per mole. So my first step now is going to be divide by 22.4 liters per mole. The net, 
The second to last step in the previous problem was do a mole ratio. We had hydrogen on top, so now hydrogen is going to go down below, and HCl will be on top. Everybody see me working backwards through the problem? Okay, you should be able to look at the problem right in front of you there. See the next step now is going to be able to take and instead of multiply by the molarity, I'm going to divide by the molarity. 3.0 moles per liter. And then the last step, we need to convert that from liters to milliliters. All I did was work backward through, backward through work I already completed. Yes? Okay. And what do we get mathematically here? Okay, the question was, why don't I have the 75.00 milliliters? That's my starting amount of hydrochloric acid, right? Okay, what we're trying to do is figure out how much hydrochloric acid was left over right now. So that's why we don't use that very first number. 40.2? Yeah, consensus? All right, 40.2 milliliters of HCl in excess. And that's our answer to that question. Um, yes, you are correct. It should just be two sig figs, so it should just be 40 milliliters. Thank you. Well, no, that wouldn't work either, because now it's just one sig fig. So it's either got it. You've either got to do that real ugly 40 points, or you have to put it in the scientific notation 4.0 times 10 to the first milliliters. Okay, either one there. What? Two sig figs. We've got to have two sig figs in our answer. Okay, so we've got to have this decimal point here, so we get two sig figs, or we put it in a scientific notation, so we have two sig figs. Okay, if you just write 40 milliliters, how many sig figs do you have? Just one. Other questions for me? Okay, last problem here. How much of the non-limiting reagent was used? This is easy. It's a subtraction problem. We have 75 milliliters of HCl at the start. We subtract the 40 milliliters of HCl that was excess. And we get 35.0, well, 35 milliliters HCl used. Questions? Yes? Yeah, technically we probably should use the unrounded answer here, but in terms of re-rounding this number, it's not going to make a difference. 